Hey guys, it's Liz from blueandhazel.com and welcome to my homeschool channel. Um, this video, I wanted to take a minute and review Math with Confidence grade three for you. So I have a flip through video if you want. I will leave that in the description. You can see inside of each of the pages and what the teacher's guide looks like, what the um, what the student books look like. But today's video, I'm not going to do a massive uh, look inside of the book. I just wanted to chat for a few minutes on how it has been using this curriculum. So we've got a couple units left finishing up the end of B book of the student workbook. But overall, I feel like we have a pretty good grasp on just how this has gone. Um, my daughter has completed an online test for third graders. Um, so that was really fun. I'll share that with you at the end. And um, also just wanted to give you a, you know, an, a look at what it was like to use this compared to grades one and two, since there are some changes in grade three. So overall, I would say that this grade three has the same lovely vibe that we loved from grade one and two. So it has, you know, the colorful workbook pages inside. Um, it has the fun games that Math with Confidence is widely known for, scripted, um, teacher's guide in here so you know exactly what to do um, the answer keys and the game directions and all of those things are right inside of the teacher's guide just like normal the major difference that my daughter noticed is that third grade you're going from two pages to three pages so I'll show you an example of the inside of one of the lessons in a minute but that was one of the things she noticed right off the bat was that just her math day took a little bit longer and we really don't spend more than 30 minutes ever on math for her. So I feel like that's a really reasonable addition to make. Um, and that extra page that is in the student workbook every day is actually kind of a correspondence between teacher and student. So it's something that you're going through while you're teaching the lesson. Um, and then the instructions for each of those little sections of that extra page are in here. So, you know, that'll have your games on it. That will have your practice problems for if you're introducing a new concept. So um, it's really not extra work for the child. I feel like it's just taken actually some of the work for the mom or the dad, if the dad's teaching. Um, there are more visuals on that extra page, I would say, for learning the lesson and practicing the game for the lesson. Um, so. One of the main differences, I would say, is just this pacing difference. So instead of having week one, week two, week three, like we've seen previously in grades one and two, um, now we have 16 units and 144 lessons, and it's kind of up to you to pace yourself. So here is the pacing guide Kate has mentioned, and you can kind of pick what you want to do. Um, it says if you teach four lessons a week with all of the enrichment lessons, um, then math will take you 36 weeks. If you teach four lessons per week, but you skip the enrichment lessons, then you'll have 32 weeks of math. If you teach five lessons per week um, and teach all of the enrichment lessons, third grade math will take you 29 weeks. If you teach five lessons per week and skip the enrichment lessons, then you'll take 26 weeks. So it's really up to you how you wanna space it. And you just um, still have that nice open and go uh, feel where you just flip to the next lesson and you know, matching spot on the teacher's guide. So I don't even really worry which week we're in. We're just gonna do math until our math is done. So one of the highlights for grade three for us has been similar to other years where the math games have just shown through and um, they have taken multiplication and division and Kate Snow has done an amazing job at just making fun ways to practice those. And so here's an example of an activity um, that I think is just really clever and you could take something simple and make it more fun. So she's got um, this roll and subtract game. You start with these numbers here, you roll the die and see what you subtract. So there's just this like hands-on, you know, unpredictable number that's going to come and they have to figure out what the answer is from there. Now, there are times when my daughter's like, I don't really want to do that. And, and so I can literally just you know go through and pick a random number it doesn't have to be a rolled number um she's still doing the math and so just kind of based on her mood her her desire to you know do a game or not do a game um then sometimes we'll simplify this but so another example of a fun one we've seen before and this is just a few lessons down would be like climb and slide directions would be in the teacher's guide for this so i'd have to glance over to see exactly what to do here um, but you have a start and a finish and you have all these practice problems. Now, some days she feels like playing the game. We'll do it. It's not going to take very long, five minutes maybe. Um, other days she's like, mom, I don't want to play that game. And so 
um, one thing I've just had her do on those days is to go through and do these subtraction problems. The idea is there's a fun way to do it or you could literally just answer answer the subtraction problems here. Okay, so here's another fun one, dice tic-tac-toe. You have some dice that you're rolling and you have a counter and then um, you, if you roll a two, then you'd pick something in that column and put a counter on it. And so you're trying to get, you know, a certain amount in a row. I can't remember how many, but it's in the instructor's guide. Um, and so you can play this over and over again if you want. You can come back to it. This would be like a game that I could have transferred easily for practicing multiplication with my fourth grader just um, for review. So, um, so you can see there's another game, Multiplication Crash. I kind of forget how we played that one. Here's another fun way that she took in um, adding three digit numbers. So instead of just having lists of three digit numbers to add together, she lets you design a playset and you get to pick which things in your playset that you want to add together and then get an estimate and then also um, practice that um, vertical algorithm of adding the ones, adding the tens and the hundreds. Um, here is a spin to win game we played many different times. Um, there have been times where we actually just like don't get a spinner and we'll put our hands, you know, I'll put my hand around and tell my daughter to say stop. And when she stops, I'll put my hand on one and put my hand down here. Same thing. And then it just gives you this kind of uh, random feel to the numbers that you're picking, which she enjoys that. Um, if there are times when she doesn't want to play the game, then this is easily adaptable. And I'll say, okay, just pick a number from the top, pick a number from the bottom, do six of those, boom, you're done. <laughs> So it's very flexible, but I love that Kate has put so much effort into just making it fun if we desire it to be more hands-on, I guess. And here's another fun one from Book B, Race to 10,000 Scoring Guide. Um, so we had three dice and we had to roll them and then depending on if you get all ones, all twos or three threes or whatever, you can use a scoreboard here to add up your points. And so there's an addition one um, and there's a subtraction day doing the same games. So my daughter actually loved this. I was thinking, oh my goodness, this might take a while. You know, 10 minutes in my brain is a while, um, but she was into it. So I just have to say this was well designed. Here's a treasure hunt game practicing division. Um, we were learning how to divide by four. And so my daughter actually was not feeling up for playing this this day. So what I let her do was just go ahead and tell me the answers to all of the division problems on this game. And then we moved on. So one of the things I just really appreciate is how much fun these games are and just the colorful um, aspect of like making something really simple that could just be, you know, a bunch of practice problems on a page um, instead making them more fun and hands on. Um, with the option to just kind of quick do the practice problems if you don't want to do the game part. My oldest son, who's in fourth grade, he says that his sister's math has way more fun stuff in it and his is way harder, he says, which I would say is probably true. So um, I'm not going to go into why we've struggled with that math curriculum in this video, but it definitely shows me that there are big differences between the math curriculums you choose. This one has a lot of fun, a lot of hands-on, solid math back practice. Um, his math has a lot less of that, and I find teaching the math facts a lot harder with Singapore, honestly, but the um, story problem side of things is much more challenging, uh, much more in depth. The bar modeling is like completely different, and I'm hoping that that's an aspect that um, Kate might bring in some bar modeling or some extra challenging story problem options. Um, there are story problems in grade three and even in some of the review pages, you'll find story problems, some one step story problems, also some two step story problems. Um, and that's probably, I would say one of the weakest links of this program. Uh, maybe that's because I'm comparing it to the extreme uh, story problems that my son is seeing in Singapore math. but. I would love to see a little bit more of a challenge or more practice problem option um, or an additional type, you know, challenging word problems um, part of, you know, the future grades. Um, I'm noticing grade three, there has been like a starred problem and that generally is a harder problem. Um, the star is there to give you kind of a heads up that like, this one will be a little extra challenging. Here would be an example of a starred problem. So this is just gonna have a little extra challenge, I guess there. Um, but overall, I still feel like they're pretty, pretty simple and she can do those on her own.
Um, and one thing that I wanted to share with you is that my daughter actually did a math test online this year. We do one at the end of each year, starting last year in second grade, this year in third grade. And I'll just do it each spring because I kind of like to have this, um, this overarching look of like what we're improving on, what we're, you know, going down in, how we're doing on this scale compared to other kids that their age that are testing. Um, I don't even really share those results with the kids. It's mainly just for me to know. Um, but she took the math test and we got the results back for this year for third grade. And I was quite surprised and excited that she was in the 90% um, range for math. And so we were not there in some other subjects, but in math, she um, did really well. And, and I was a little bit surprised because um, math with confidence isn't considered to be, you know, extra challenging. It's it's on point with grade level. And I just was really, really wowed, I guess, and happy to see that, okay, this is covering the basics that we need to be covering. It's easy for me to teach and follow. It's engaging for my daughter. So that's like win, win, win. Um, yes, are there some things that I would like to maybe um, work on more? Yeah, that would be continued work on our math facts so that, you know, she's quicker with it. Um, that would be figuring out how to um, read a story problem and then know what you're supposed to write down as a math equation. I feel like we need more practice with that. Um, but we can, we can find resources for that if need be. But I just wanted to share that with you, um, just so that you feel like, wow, you know, sure, maybe she guessed on a few questions and got them right. I get it, you know, but, um, I do think it is just a good, uh, good look for me to see that we obviously covered some of the stuff and it stuck for her, whatever it was in Math with Confidence grade three. So um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments, I'd be happy to answer those. Grade four is actually coming out scheduled in June and I'm hoping to get my hands on that so I can do a flip through for you. Um, but we will see it in June and then grade five will be the next year um, in the spring around June. And then also grade six, I believe it's going to go to. And after that, unfortunately, there is no plan to go um, higher up. Uh, that'd be my only complaint about this program is that it doesn't go through high school. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching and please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. Also be sure to subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified whenever I upload new videos. I love sharing kind of our journey along the way with um, the different kids. We have a first, third, and fourth grader this year. So if that interests you, I'd love to have you along. Thanks for watching and until next time.